The first Australian-built orbital rocket just took flight for the first time, but it didn't quite make it to orbit. So what happened? Well, after months of regulatory setbacks, weather delays, and the accidental separation of the fairings while still on the ground, Gilmore Space's three-stage Eris launch vehicle finally took off from the Bowen Orbital Spaceport on Wednesday morning local time. However, not even a second into flight, an engine started to see some trouble. The exhaust definitely didn't look correct, looking too yellow in colour and very unstable in shape. Shape. The 30 metric ton rocket then started translating in the direction of the failed engine, indicating that it was producing very little to no thrust whatsoever. Each of the four Sirius engines on the first stage produces 115 kilonewtons of thrust, as of the most recent data provided during the final qualification test in 2022. In a normal scenario, this would give Eris a thrust to weight ratio of 1.5 at liftoff, which, judging by the first half second by eye, looks to be about correct. However, if you take away one of those engines, the thrust to weight ratio drops to 1.2, or in other words, the thrust of the three remaining engines is barely enough to keep the rocket slowly climbing, which we can also see from the awesome video provided by Gilmore Space. The three remaining engines are also not symmetrically placed around the centre of mass, resulting in the power slide. Approximately nine seconds after liftoff, with the vehicle slowly climbing, what appears to be some white gases are quickly ejected from the aft end of the vehicle. Unfortunately, this is on the opposite side of the rocket for the close-up camera, but it's simultaneously Simultaneously results in the vehicle starting to slowly fall down to the ground. This is indicative of a second engine failure, leaving only two running. By doing this, the thrust to weight ratio drops to 0.78, or in other words, there is not enough thrust to keep the rocket going up, but there is enough to stop it falling down to the ground straight away, which is why we can then see this slow, graceful, accidental propulsive landing until the vehicle hits the ground and tips over. The fact that engines failed on the flight was also confirmed by the head of avionics at Gilmore on X, but they did not confirm which engines failed, probably because the video speaks for itself. It should also be noted that the Sirius engines on the first stage can't gimbal or steer themselves to point the rocket. Instead, it uses reaction control thrusters for steering. But why didn't it blow up? Well, it did, just not straight away. That could be explained by the fact that the first two stages are hybrid stages, but beware, we're entering wild speculation territory. Stage one and stage two use liquid hydrogen peroxide as the oxidizer and a solid fuel as the fuel. There is the possibility that because of the slower touchdown and solid propellants, that the possibility of a rupture straight away was minimized until the vehicle tipped over and the kerosene oxygen third stage impacted the ground. But again, wild speculation and Gilmore has not said anything surrounding the explosions witnessed. Next up will be Flight 2, which will follow a huge data review. Gilmore says that is currently scheduled for within six to eight months, which if they could pull that off would be mighty impressive. Something else that was impressive was the fact that even with half of the engines failing, Eris managed to keep itself pointing upright during the entire flight. A huge shout out to the Gilmore Guidance, Navigation and Control team for that. That was just incredible to see. For now, I've been Ryan Caton for NSF. Thanks for watching and goodbye.